How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the very first Strictly Nintendo podcast, where I wanted to talk about the NX. Why? Because everybody's doing it, and I just want to fit in. Now, obviously, that's not the case, because if I just wanted to fit in, I'd be playing the other consoles. We all know that Nintendo doesn't have that high school hallway cool factor thing going on. Now, obviously, that's a joke, and there's nothing to get up in arms about there. You know, a joke is just a joke, like EA. Now, what I want to talk about here is very specific topics concerning the NX. What I believe Nintendo needs to do to ensure a better opportunity for success with the NX. Secondly, we'll talk about what I would like to see out of the NX. And then, of course, when I think we'll see the NX launch, and this will intertwine with the last topic, which is the last hurrah of the Wii U and the games that I'm excited for coming out for the Wii U. Now, as far as what I believe Nintendo needs to do to really get a stronger stance in the industry and have a better opportunity for success with the NX is, first and foremost, they have to go x86 architecture. Or, if there's a different architecture out there which would be equally as good or more beneficial, I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be like super savvy on the tech side of things, so I don't know 100% of if there's an alternative out there, but I do know that Macs, PCs, Xbox, and PlayStation, all x86 architecture. And the reason that Nintendo needs to go x86 architecture is for the benefit solely of third-party developers. Why? Because the less time and money that a developer needs to spend getting their game up and running on a Nintendo console, the better it is for everybody. You know, the Xbox One is not really, as far as install base, not really performing much better than the Wii U but it has a ton of third-party support. Now, there's other factors out there, of course, but if the Wii U was x86 architecture and it took less time and money to get that game up and running on the Wii U and the games at least made a profit, we'd see more third-party support. Maybe not a ton of third-party support, but more than we're seeing now, clearly. And a lot of that, is like what I mentioned in my video, my open letter to Yevs Gima. It's not a factor that Nintendo gamers don't like mature content. It's that there's not enough of the install base to return the profits that Ubisoft needs to see to put those games on Nintendo consoles. So it's all about benefiting third-party developers. Again, I can't drive it home enough. The less time and money it takes to get their game up and running on a Nintendo console... As long as their games are making a profit, and now is a better risk-to-reward ratio, which gives them a better opportunity to make profit, and any profit's better than no profit. And this carries me over to my next example of what Nintendo needs to do, is they need to support third party. They need to promote and advertise third party. Like I said in a previous video, you know, take five minutes of a 45-minute direct and mention third party games coming out. Do the same thing with the digital event at E3. Do the same thing with Treehouse Live. Do the same thing with Nintendo Minute. Just mention them. Show a little bit of gameplay footage and talk about how you're going to be able to enjoy all these great third-party titles on the Nintendo console. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. It doesn't take a whole lot of money to invest in that but it shows the third-party developers that Nintendo supports them and is thankful for them bringing their games to their console. Because Reggie himself talks about it, software drives hardware sales. And if you can show people a wide variety of experiences, you're going to capture more interest in your hardware. Now, that leads me to another thing. Nintendo needs to grow their exclusives. Now, what do I mean by that? I don't mean multiple Zeldas, multiple Marios, multiple Metroids on every console. I'm not talking about that. Yes, we want to see one key game, one big game of all of those classic franchises, every console. But we want to see more exclusives. Sometimes it's working with, like they did with Platinum or Valhalla to get Bayonetta 2 as an exclusive, or Devil's Third as an exclusive, or working with third-party companies to bring exclusive experiences like Hyrule Warriors, or how they're working to bring in Pokémon Tournament, things of that nature. Work with third-party developers, and not even necessarily on Nintendo IP. You don't have to have Hyrule Warriors or Pokémon Tournament, 
just bring something like they did with Bayonetta 2 and Devil's Third, bringing an exclusive to that console. And sometimes it's not even a franchise, you know, it doesn't need to be seeing a game that we're always going to every year or every couple of years play a new installment of that game with that character. Sometimes the exclusive is the mechanic. For instance, if you look at Bayonetta, Wonderful 101, and you look at Metal Gear Rising, these are all platinum games, and the combat systems are almost identical. They've been tweaked to fit the overall feel and content of that game, but they all play like a platinum game. So if Nintendo say, for instance, the GameCube game Geist, if everybody says, you know what, this is a great game, we love the way it plays, we love how we interact with it, we love the mechanics of the game, but Nintendo's like, well, everything we can do with that character, everything we can do with that storyline was done in that one game, so there's no place to bring that sequel out. We don't have to. Just bring that mechanic, evolve it, refine it, adapt it to a new storyline, to a new character. That's what I mean about growing their exclusives. You know, when the consumer, when the gamer looks there and goes, wait a minute, you're telling me I get all these classic franchises that we know and love from Nintendo, plus all these new exclusives from second or third party or from Nintendo themselves, plus, you know, multi-plats that I want to play, that's going to draw interest into the console, and that's going to sell hardware, and in return, as that install base grows, that's going to draw more interest from third-party developers who are going to say, again, it's easy to get a game up and running, it doesn't take a whole lot of time or money, and the install base is growing, let's put it out. Let's say, let's talk crazy for a second, let's say that Rockstar puts out Grand Theft Auto 6 on the NX, and it was super easy for them to port it over. They're like, you know what, it wasn't too difficult to get this game up and running. And, you know, the NX supports all the past controllers. We have the first-person shooter aspect that we developed for Grand Theft Auto V. We're going to put it in Grand Theft Auto VI. Why don't we look at the Wii Remote as creating a first-person shooter light gun style experience exclusive to the NX? This is where Nintendo really needs to think on these things, really needs to get creative and take risks. Now, another thing that the NX has to have is an Ethernet for it. Nintendo is now taking risks of having online Citric gameplay such as Splatoon or Super Mario Maker, as well as having this expansive digital delivery system with the eShop where it's growing and growing and we know we're going to see even more from the eShop platform when the NX comes out. They have to have an Ethernet port to provide the best possible online gaming experience, but offer a more stable broadband connection, I think an Ethernet port is a must. The other thing is power. You know, now do I think that Nintendo will go the PlayStation route of like, and I'm going to do a car comparison here, do I think that they're going to do like classic American muscle car power? No. But I would like to see Nintendo come out with a console that's more powerful than the PlayStation 4, and we hear more of like what the developer said about Need for Speed Most Wanted. When they put that game out on the Wii U, they were praising the power of the Wii U in comparison to the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. That's a good thing, you know? So what I'd like to see is I'd like to see Nintendo have a console that's more powerful than the PlayStation 4, and when the PlayStation 5 comes out, the power difference is equivalent to that of the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. So that people are like, yeah, well, you know, the NX is less powerful in comparison to the PlayStation 5, but honestly, the difference is kind of negligible, so it's still a relevant console. I'd love to see that happen. And honestly, what I'd kind of like to have is simple box. It's a good powerhouse, Ethernet support. I'd like to have an internal hard drive that's easily accessible so you can swap it out. Uh, honestly, I'd be happy with just a hard drive bay. I mean, give me 64 gigs flash internal memory for the operating system saves and updates. And then give me a bay. You know, two screws or whatever that I just pull out, pop in, you know, a SATA laptop drive, stick it in. I mean, I can go down to, I can go to Newegg.com and get a two terabyte hard drive for nothing. And I'd like to see it come with a pro controller that has the GameCube controller style analog triggers. Seriously, give me a two ninety nine box that's a powerhouse, hard drive bay, and a pro controller with analog triggers. Call it a day. So that's what I think Nintendo needs to do to make the NX a success, as well as kind of what I'd like to see. Uh, I'd also want backwards compatibility with all controllers. You know, if you have 
the Pro Controller, the Classic Controller, Wii Remote, Nunchuck, Balance Board, the whole nine yards, then those third party, first party, and second party, and indie developers, all the developers can pick and choose what they want to support. So if, you know, a third party developer really wants to bring their game to the NX and it has gamepad support and they're like, you know, well, it doesn't take much to get this game up and running on the console and it's a pretty safe bet that we're going to make some money because the install base is growing rapidly. Let's look at the gamepad since the NX supports the gamepad and see what we can do because we always had those ideas. It just wasn't worth the investment at the time of the Wii U. So that's that. Now, when do I think the NX is going to launch? I am still sticking by early fall 2017. I think that Nintendo is going to focus on the 30th anniversary of The Legend of Zelda all throughout 2016, and they're going to end 2016 with Legend of Zelda Wii U, and that is going to be the big last hurrah to send the Wii U off in style. Nintendo has always had a five to six year lifespan for their consoles. When they do announce their consoles at E3, it's always been they announce the console at E3 and then a year or two later, the console comes out. All they'll do is show off the console in 2016. 2017, they'll show more. They'll announce the launch titles and they'll give it the firm date and we'll see it in early fall 2017. That way it can launch with a major first party game, whether it's a 3D Mario, they'll most likely have a couple months after that, the HD version of Zelda U possibly within or maybe within the first year that will give them the holidays 2017 to follow up with a massive game whether it's Splatoon 2, Mario Kart 9, something of that nature, possibly Metroid Prime 4 or some Metroid game, something of that nature. And then the other thing is is if we're to believe that AMD is doing the hardware for the NX, AMD said that whatever they're working on would be ready for production summer 2016. Well, yes, the first run of consoles could be ready for winter holiday 2016, but I doubt it. You know, if the hardware is not ready for production until the summer of 2016, they still got to have the final dev kits go out. I say that they're going to want to be putting those finalized dev kits out in the fall to winter, you know, 2016, so that when the NX launches in early fall, like September-ish 2017, then you have that September to December range for third-party developers to have their game on that console ready for the holiday season. That's what I see. I honestly don't see the NX launching until early fall 2017. I think that 2016 will be the final hurrah for the Wii U, and we still have a lot to go. I mean, we're only days away from, you know, Xenoblade Chronicles X, Devil's Third for those of you who are interested in it, Fast Racing Neo, and then we get into 2016, where we have other indie games, virtual console games. We also have Star Fox Zero in April. We're going to probably see Pikmin 4 sometime next year. We're going to see Shin Megami Tensei X Fire Emblem. These are all games I can't wait for. We're also going to see Pokémon Tournament. And we're going to close out the year with Zelda U. So there's a lot going on next year. There's even more that we haven't heard about. I think that 2016 would be a great year to send off the Wii U, close it out with Zelda U. So am I right? Am I wrong? I don't know. This is just my thoughts based on more what we actually know. You know, I mean, because really we don't know anything until Nintendo comes out and confirms we don't know anything. And until then, take care.